Hello everyone, and welcome to Slice, Print, Roleplay. In this episode, I'm going to be continuing my series where I teach you everything you need to know to get started with your resin 3D printer. More specifically, I'm going to be going over how to safely remove your models from your build plate. Alright, let's get to it. Real quick, I just wanted to mention that I used a new setup for most of this video, and I'm still working out the kinks with that, so I do ask for your forgiveness as the audio might get a little bit rough at times, but it's something I'm working on, and hopefully it'll be much improved for next video. With that out of the way, let's get to it. So before we jump into the video, I want to go over the tools that I'll be using for this process. And I do recommend you pick up anything you see here that you don't have on hand. Um, you can find all of this stuff in a kit link that I have down below. First up is going to be either a silicon mat like this, or a plastic tablecloth, just something that you can put under your workspace to make it easier to clean up any drips or spills of resin. Next, you'll want something you can use to clean both your tools and your work surface. For me, I use 90% IPA and a spray bottle. You can use the Sprayway glass cleaner, a lot of people recommend that. I have used it in the past, there's nothing wrong with it, it's just a lot more expensive than IPA is right now, so use whatever you have on hand or whatever's cheaper. I found that IPA gives me, or at least 90% IPA, gives me the same results and it's a lot cheaper. And in a spray bottle, it's just as easy to use. Next, you'll want a roll of paper towels. It's pretty self-explanatory as to why you'll want these, but you don't really need anything special. If you're like me and you want to treat yourself every now and then, you can get a roll of these blue shop towels. They're slightly more expensive, but they do last a long time. I can typically take one sheet, rip it down the center, and that'll last me for pretty much the entire process. And yes, I realize it sounds pretty sad to say that treating myself is buying a slightly more expensive, slightly more durable roll of paper towels, but it's really just the small victories right now. Next, you need to wear nitriol gloves anytime you're handling uncured resin. And you do want to wear nitriol and not latex because they will give you better protection. And you want to wear those because uncured resin is considered an irritant to your skin. Some people will have a really severe reaction to it, so it's definitely not a good idea to play around. Just wear your gloves anytime you're going to be touching uncured resin or anything that might have touched uncured resin. Additionally, if you're someone who gets headaches from really strong smells, especially chemical smells, you may want to consider also wearing a full face shield or going all out and getting a respirator. This will just make sure that any of the really strong resin smells that you may encounter won't potentially ruin your good time while you're printing. Next, I highly recommend getting one of these rubber kitchen scrapers. There are two main reasons why I found this to be an invaluable tool. First off, any time that the resin has sat in the vat for more than about an hour, you do want to take the time to mix it back up because the compounds in the resin will separate from each other and you want to mix them back up to make sure that you get good results. While you're doing that, as I'm scraping the bottom of the vat and mixing all these materials back together, you can often find little bits of material or cured resin or anything that's been left on the vat uh, or on the, the FEP in the bottom of the vat just by scraping over them and feeling the difference in texture with this tool. So this can be really, really helpful for a lot of different reasons. Lastly, whenever I go to drain this, it's really useful to be able to use this to scrape resin out of the vat to make the draining process go a lot faster. So I highly recommend this tool. And I've saved the most important tool for last. Having a good scraper will make this process way easier. So let's talk about, at least in my opinion, what makes a good scraper. First and foremost, you want the handle size and the material to be something that you can grip really well without having to worry about slipping. The last thing you want to do is lose your grip on a sharp tool when you're applying pressure to it. Next, you want the blade to actually be metal. There are some out there that will be plastic and they just never work as well, at least in my experience. And lastly, if I can catch the light, you can see that the blade, the tip here is actually beveled. And that's really important because when you're actually using this to scrape something off the build plate, you want to be able to pop under the models and get them to detach. And when you have a blade that just ends in a flat edge, all you're really doing is ramming against the models and hoping that you'll knock them off, which doesn't go well. So those are the things that I recommend. Check the scraper you have, make sure it does fit that criteria. If it doesn't, then like I said, I'll have a good one linked down below. Real quick, I wanna talk about an optional item that I do highly recommend. So getting one of these brackets that allows your build plate to sit at an angle is gonna be really useful. Now granted, it's only gonna be useful for people who plan on leaving their models on the build plate for a little while, but if you do, what this accomplishes is it allows all the excess resin from the build plate and from your models to drip back down into the vat. 
This is going to accomplish a couple of cool things. First off, it's going to save you a little bit of resin. It's not a big deal, but it is kind of nice. Second, it's going to keep your tools and your workspace a little bit cleaner. But third, and probably the most important, is that when you go to clean these models, which is something that we're going to talk about in the next video, when you submerge these into your cleaner, you'll have less resin going into your cleaning solution, which will keep it cleaner longer. So this is really important if you're somebody who's going to leave the models on for a while. If you pop them right off as soon as it's done and you start your next print, this isn't really much benefit. But it's something definitely to look into. Uh, you can usually find these just by searching for like drip bracket or something along those lines and then the model of your printer on Thingiverse or whatever STL site you like using and that'll usually have a couple of different options. So that's everything I recommend having on hand for this process. With all that out of the way, let's get started. First thing we're going to do is put our gloves on. After that, lay down two paper towels and spray them down with your cleaner. What this does is get two paper towels that are prepped and ready to go so that whenever you have resin on your hands, you don't have to touch your spray bottle or paper towels or whatever else you have around. You can get your hands or your tools cleaned really quickly with these two paper towels that are prepped and ready to go. Next, you want to grab your bill plate and your scraper. Now, when it comes to breaking the bond between your models and the bill plate, these two points are going to be your best friend. In other words, you don't want to use the widest part of your blade like this to try to get under there and pop it off. You want to use something like this tip that has a very, very sharp point and a very small amount of surface area to kind of get under that model. And as soon as you get that, that point, that tip under, what's going to happen is you're going to break the bond and with very minimal pressure, the rest of the model is going to slide off. So let me show you what that looks like in real time. But there is another note that I want to make. Whenever you're applying pressure to your build plate, you do want to lift it up so that you have a gap here under your table. You never want to be applying pressure with your build plate sitting like that because what you're going to do is instead of your build plate maintaining its its 90 degree angle or whatever you have it set to so that it's level on your printer you're going to slowly cause the mechanism to loosen or potentially bend or break so you don't want to apply pressure directly on the build plate like this because you're creating a fulcrum that's going to cause a lot of pressure at those weak points so what you want to do is you want to lift your build plate and support it so that all your force is going directly into the table or the model to pry it off and not down at an angle like this. That's really important. So I've got three models here to demonstrate. Hopefully between these three, you'll get a good idea of what I'm talking about. First of all, I'm going to tip the build plate up so that it's 90 degrees of the table. Then I'm going to take my scraper with uh, kind of a, a grip that I can angle to one of these points. And I'm going to get the point on part of the model and just start to press down. And like I said, it doesn't take a lot of force. I'm honestly just getting that tip under there, and once it breaks the, the bond, the whole model will pop right off. All right, let's do that again. So I'm going to take my scraper, get the point under the back of the model here. I'm just going to apply pressure while also lifting the bill plate up so that it's 90 degrees of the table. I'm going to apply pressure until eventually I can just pop the model off. So again, just getting that the corner of the blade under there to knock it off makes it really easy. Now, this bugbear, which uh, again, if you don't know these models, um, they're both really awesome. It's a bugbear from Brit Minis and a really cool gnome mage from TPK Lab. I talked about them in my last video. You can find links in the description down below to get these models. They are awesome. Um, but because I printed this model flat on the build plate and it does uh, not have a bevel or a skate on the bottom, you can see that these ones here actually have sort of like a, a bevel to them so that they give you a little bit of a... Uh, a little bit of a helping hand to kind of get under and pop them off. This one doesn't have it, so it's going to be a little bit harder, but I can still use that same process and it will be relatively easy. So again, I'm just going to take the point and slowly work it back and forth until I can get under the model, break that bond and pop it off. And you can see that there is very little damage to that base. Even though this model was printed flat on the build plate, I still don't have hardly any damage. You can barely even see that there's a little tiny bit of a notch there missing. So really, like, you're doing zero damage to these. Nothing you're ever going to notice. So yeah, it's a really easy process. Now, if you are finding that your models are stuck fast, like they're welded to the build plate, then there are a couple of things that you can take a look at. First of all, your, uh, your level of your build plate may be squished a little too close to your LCD, which could be causing a overly strong bond with your, uh, the resin in your build plate. Another thing to look at are going to be your bottom level or your bottom layer settings. So if your exposure time is really high, that can cause an overly strong bomb with your build plate. And when it comes to bottom layers, um, I typically use a layer count of four, especially on smaller um, printers like this. On larger printers, I might consider using five, but typically four is fine. 
All right, so next up, we're gonna take one of our prepped paper towels and we're gonna wipe the bottom of our build plate. It's not super important that this is clean, but what we're doing by wiping the build plate is we're checking to make sure that we didn't uh, potentially put a really sharp gouge or leave like a burr of metal here. Um, and also to make sure that we've gotten all the little bits of resin. Sometimes um, some models might have a really small base or small features on their base, and you might break a piece of resin or break most of the model off and leave a small piece of resin on here. So by cleaning it with your paper towel, you can feel any imperfections. You wanna make sure you get those off or get your build plate clean or you know do whatever you need to to remove those imperfections because if you leave them on there, if there's a raised section, that will get crushed into your LCD and potentially break your LCD. So it's really important to just take a few seconds, clean off the bottom. If you don't feel anything, then you're good to put it back on your printer for your next print. Now that I'm done with my scraper, I'm gonna clean that off so I can set it to the side without it contaminating anything. Then I'm gonna spray down and clean my work area to make sure that this is clean and uh, all resin has been removed so that I, again, don't have to worry about contaminating anything. The nice thing about these silicon mats is that once they dry, you can roll them up and store them. Um, so this is one of the main reasons why I use these mats over the plastic tablecloths. Also, these just last pretty much forever. Now, the last thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix up this resin because it's been sitting in the vat for a while. So to do that, I'm gonna take my build plate off to make it a little easier to get to, and I'm gonna take my rubber scraper. Now, one thing that I forgot to mention about the scraper that is really important, it probably goes without saying, but I'm gonna say it anyway. Um, any of your tools, but especially something like this that you use for resin, it should not be used for anything else ever again. So if you were to get this back into the kitchen by accident, this could potentially get somebody really sick. So put permanent marker on it, put some tape on it, whatever you have to do to make sure that all of your tools that you're using for resin stay in your resin area. All right, so when it comes to mixing up resin, it's pretty easy. And when I say mixing, I'm not talking about mixing two different resins, just the, com the compounds in one resin on its own will start to separate after a little while. And to do that, all I do is start at one side and kind of apply a little bit of pressure and just move to the other side. Because most of these different compounds uh, will sit at the bottom because they're a little heavier. So you're kind of scraping them up from the bottom and mixing them back in. And like I said before, this will also help you um, if you feel any imperfections as you're moving across the surface, this will let you know if you potentially have anything stuck to your FEP. Um, so just doing this for a few seconds after a print, even if you're, you know, you're sure you don't have any failures, could potentially save you, you know, a lot of money depending on what printer you're using. Because if you break the LCD, it can be uh, a pain to replace. So I'm just going to do this a couple of times. What you're looking for is you want to make sure that all of the resin is the same consistency and same color. You don't want to have streaks of lighter or darker colors in here. So you just want it all to look the same. And then when you're done, I like to just scrape the excess onto the side of my vat to kind of save just that little bit of extra resin. Then I'm gonna take one of my paper towels and I'm just gonna clean off my spatula here, or uh, technically I guess this is a rubber scraper, not a spatula. I think there's a difference, I don't know. So I'm gonna clean that off, make sure that uh, I got it as clean as possible. And I'm gonna put it away, put your build plate back on, tighten it up and you're ready to start your next print. And that's it. I hope you now know how to safely remove your models from your build plate and what tools are required in order to get the best results. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments down below and I'll be happy to help. And if you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. It does help the channel grow and I really appreciate it. And if you like the work that I'm doing here and you want to support the channel, you can find my Patreon information down below. Alright, thanks so much for watching, now let's go print something.